Hey guys, it's me, Max Strawn. I'm back with you for Making Metal with Max. Today's episode is going to be a continuation of the last show, which is GMAW, part number two. So stay tuned, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Power. Lots of know about power. The simpler power you use, the cheaper the machine is going to be, but the less options you're going to have. All right? Now, the next thing, I brought it up once, is constant current versus constant voltage. Now, this is also a thing that has changed in the last 10 to 15 years. This used to be very cut and dry in the old days. Constant current, which means I have constant amperage or heat right current we know is amps and heat they're the same thing okay so if i have constant heat i have a very reliable and strong heat source that's good for melting big pieces of metal generally we think about it in terms of small or stick welding because the electrodes are an eighth of an inch in diameter 3.2 mils or a quarter inch. I've used 3 8 inch electrodes that were three feet long to weld four panels at a steel producing factory. Like, I mean, the rods can get huge. And if you have a big material, remember, we know this now because of what we learned. If I need lots of heat, I need lots of amps. And if I need lots of amps, I'm going to want a machine that's geared to give me constant current. Now, that becomes a primary, which means that I'll have a dial. So on the front of my machine, I'll have a dial and it'll say amps. And I turn it up, up or down, and I can go 100 amps, 400 amps. And what that machine will do is try its bang hardest to keep that setting that I give it. If I say it's 150 amps, then as I'm welding, if I pull away or get closer or do whatever I do, that machine is going to try to keep that amperage constant. Got it? Now, remember, we always know that there's two variables, there's amps and voltage. So that means in this system here, if I'm keeping the amps solid, my volts are going, depending on what I'm doing. That's where it makes it up. If I get too close, my voltage goes down because I need less pressure. If I get too far away, voltage goes up because I need more pressure to jump the gap. Simple, right? Now, constant voltage. Well, now my dial is controlling volts, which means I'm controlling the distance of the jump because voltage is pressure. Now, I don't want to have a lot of talk about amperage in a voltage setup. So that means that my electrode can't be too thick. Hence, we have constant voltage, constant voltage. We're going to want to use thinner materials, thinner, which is like a MIG wire. Or GMAW wire, 045, 035, 020, 045, 052, you're kind of getting to the top end. You know, 116th wire, you're getting pretty dang big. You know, and in the CC world, a 116th electrode, you, I've used them. You weld for three inches and the rest just melts away because it's too much amperage. Well, here, I'm running thin wire. I don't need a lot of amperage. But what I do need to control is my voltage. Because the wire's being fed continuously. So if my wire outpaces my heat, it'll hit and, and create a problem. Or if my wire's coming out too slow and my heat is too high, what it'll do is it'll melt up here and melt to my tip. So what I need to regulate in a constant voltage setup is my distance, my arc voltage. Okay, that distance in there, which is based off of a dial. If I have it low, that means that it's going to burn close. If I have it high, it's going to burn further away. And the number one thing that everyone does wrong, well, I shouldn't say everyone, but, you know, the dippity do heads out there that think they know what they're talking about, is that they tell you, hey, you're on a GMAW setup. They say, hey, go turn up the heat. And if I want to go turn up the heat, what am I going to turn up? Not the voltage. Okay? Turning up the voltage is not turning up the heat. It's increasing your gap. Okay? Now, 
There is a ratio. I increased the gap. I'm going to have to have more wire. But really, in this world, wire speed equals heat. Okay, because that's the amount of wire coming out. If I push more wire through, that means I need more heat to melt that wire to make it not stick, which then overall increases my heat input, which now makes my weld hotter. That's not the voltage I'm controlling. If I want more heat, you turn up the wire speed. You want more penetration, turn up the wire speed. You want flatter welds or a wider weld or anything related to the distance of that weld, I will now control my voltage, okay? Now, like I said, this was real cut and dry before. I would say, you know what? I wanna buy a CC machine for my MIG or I wanna buy a CC, or sorry, CV machine for MIG or a CC machine for stick. Cool. Well, it's not so simple anymore, okay? What's happening now? Well, what's happening now is that because of our awesome inverter, SCR, IGBT technology, what we have now is that we have sort of a combination of these things. We know CC is awesome for heat and penetration. We know that CV is awesome for profiles and deposition. This is slow and hot, but gets deep. This is fast and pretty, right? We know, hey, if you've ever stick welded and make weld, you know what I'm talking about, right? I can make the prettiest welds with GMAW. I cut them in a saw. There's no penetration. Crack. I can have the ugliest weld in stick, and it'll bend perfectly clean because it penetrated so well. But it's so slow. No one's making money on stick unless you're in the oil patch, and we know what happened with that, right? So now, what happened? Well, with our machines now, here's our wire feeder, a little drive unit. There's my wire. My trigger wire comes out over here out of the machine. I got my return. I will have now a CC DC unit, direct current, constant current machine, right? So this is the heat. And I have my return here, right? So I got plus and minus following. This is all falling under the CC world, but this is what happens. I add another little cable. And it's a little thing. Now, on the new, new machines, like Ferodius, I know, and the new Millers, I think. I actually, I think the new Lincolns as well, the Ideal Arts. I think pretty much most of the new companies now have actually gotten rid of this second line. But I'm going to keep it here just for giving you an example of what it does. This is what we call the Volt Sense. Okay? So what we've done now is we've added another little clamp, which is reading the information at the point of welding. It's actually physically reading your arc length as you weld. So it is controlling your wire speed and voltage distribution based off of a computer. It's reading it and deciding at that point up or down in order to maintain the proper arc length. The volt sensor is controlling the arc length, but the machine is giving you the power of the CC. So these are now CC machines welding with a CV arc or volt sense lead. And like I said, the new machines don't even have the little extra cable. It's built right into the gun where it can just read it off the wire itself. But it's still the same idea. It's a CC machine, but it's welding with CV intelligence. All right? Now that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, the last thing we're going to do, because uh, I'm coming up to my limit of how long I like to keep these lessons. Remember, CC, heat, CV, arc length, or a mix of the two. Now, we're talking $30,000 machines when we're talking about mixing the two. This is now cutting edge, cool stuff. What you get now is a wire. If we go CC, CV, volt sense, volt sense, right? What we now have is a wire that can also penetrate and control width and profile. This is the future especially for pipe and pressure welding. Now, if you've been anywhere, the Lincoln College down in Cleveland, the Miller College, or Feronius, if they'll come to you, which I've been to all three of these, you will learn that this is where everything is going because I can now do my root, fill, and cap with one machine. And MIG was never good, or GMAW was never good at the root weld because it's a CV process, all right? But with this new mix process, now my roots are bang in there, I can actually even set the penetration based on the ability of the computers. It's ability to react because of its quick response time because of the new technologies of SCRs and IGBT circuit boards. 
it can now react within a fraction of a millisecond and make sure that I'm getting good penetration on an open root weld. And that's awesome. Okay. Last voltage, quick, just so you guys know, let's say this is an 035 wire, 035 ER70S dash X or dash two, let's say that's a pretty multi-purpose wire. I'm gonna have voltage. This is what I call my little voltage speedometer. Just for you guys to know quickly before I run out of time here. 0, 16, 24, 36. Okay, this is your voltage spectrum. We're gonna get more into this into the next episode, but if you wanna go out and buy a machine, just know the higher up the spectrum you go, the more expensive the machine gets and the more you can do. Zero to 16, short circuit, thin metals or open root. Okay, that is a that means that the wire, the voltage, the pressure is low, and the wire is basically going to be touching. Okay, short circuit, it's actually going to be making contact. We'll get deeper into this later. 16 to 24, we call globular. This is more of a transition current where you're getting from one to the other. And there's an ugly, you know, the half brother. If you got three, if you're three in the in the kids in your family, you know that the oldest is the strongest, the youngest is the baby, and the middle one's the one that's always angry. Well, that's globular. He's the middle child, right? So what he is, is he's transitioning from here to here. So the wire is touching, not touching, not touching, kind of open. But the end of the wire always has this telltale glob that shoots off and makes a lot of spatter. There's not a lot of place in the industry for globular. So if you're buying a machine that maxes out at 20 volts, 21 volts, versus a machine that maxes out at 18 volts, if the one that maxes out at 21 is $400 more, screw it. Don't get it. You might as well just get the one that's in this zone comfortably. It's going to be less than money, right? It's going to be cheaper. And I can just buy that welder and I can weld on thin metals and do things like that around the whole, no problem, right? Especially if I have a 16 volt machine that's maximum, but it can go up to 88 amps versus say a 21 volt machine that is good to 60 amps. Well, look at the heat. Okay. I might as well take a lower voltage machine at a higher heat. Right? It can accommodate more wire and get a better weld. Whereas they'll just try to sell it. This is a selling tactic. They'll say, hey, look, higher voltage but lower heat. That's no good. Then you get to spray over here, which is over 24 volts. Now we're talking. We're cooking now. We got lots of voltage, right, to burn, make bigger gaps. We can weld further away, right? And we can accommodate bigger wires because we're going to be running into, you know, 200 plus amps. So this is heavy duty. This is expensive. This is industrial. Okay. If you want to get into heavy duty industrial welding or certified welding, you got to go here. If you're looking for at home, stay here. Anything in the middle, don't worry about it. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed the episode. Like I said earlier, my name is Max. I love the emails and the Instagrams. I love all the communication you guys are sending to me. Keep it up. Uh, ask Max at cwbgroup.org. Thanks to Matt and Trent who are helping me out with this from the CWB Education Group. Uh, thanks to the college. You know, we're still preparing. We're waiting, to, waiting for this COVID thing to pass. I'm doing this to try to help everybody out. Hope you guys appreciate the work that we put into this. You know, if you guys have got any questions, I've had some awesome ones. I had someone ask me to do a specific episode on spark testing for the people out there that are working in the garages or home forges. I think it's an awesome idea. I'm going to do it. So stay tuned for that one. So next episode, we'll keep going with this, talking about waveforms. GMAW and power supplies working towards that cool end goal. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.